Hello and welcome back to the Sharks World, ladies and gentlemen. I know, it's been a minute. For some reason around this time of the year, life decides to happen all at once for me. Most of it involves work, some involving family, nothing bad though, just stuff that needs to be addressed. Either way, we're back in the seat and I have a lot of shark content coming for you folks. For today's video, it dawned on me that I have yet to do a video dedicated to Megalodon. So, as the real King Shark, why not change that? The topic in question for such a video is one where we're going to present an updated look at Otidus Megalodon, given that a lot of new findings have come out for it. As always in my videos, I will leave the many links to the articles I'll be referencing in the description below. Be sure to take some time and look at them closely. With those details out of the way, let's not waste any time and dive right in. Grab you a cold drink, pull up a chair to the table, and let's take a look at the updated Megalodon. So, for starters, let's get this fact out of the way. Megalodon is dead. I know, I know. I've gone over it before, as well as other YouTubers and friends of the channel. But it needs to be repeated and said for the people in the back. Megalodon is not living in our oceans anymore. It died out a long time ago for a multitude of reasons. And that's okay. Look. No one wants to see a 60 plus foot shark more than me, but here's the reality of what would happen if for some reason Megalodon was alive, which it's not. One of three scenarios would take place. Number one, scientists would want to tag it and experiment on it, which is fair because holy hell, it's a Megalodon. We have to find out everything about it and how it survived among other things. Number two, people chasing fame would mess with it or try to get that next viral clip or big video that will break the internet. You'll lose faith in humanity if you see what people are willing to do for clout. And number three, trophy hunters will be frothing at the mouth to claim they killed the last Megalodon. Somewhere among those scenarios, Somebody's gonna get hurt. Not because the shark is evil or would try to eat them. Something as big as a megalodon wouldn't bother trying to eat a human. But because that's the nature of dealing with an animal as big as megalodon in the ocean. The moment someone gets hurt, the shark's the villain. You can see the headlines now. Giant monster shark thought to be extinct injures or kills diver. The internet would be a frenzy of misinformation, which would ultimately lead to people trying to kill an animal living its own life in the ocean. I won't speak for you, but I personally don't want that fate for a shark. So, let's move on to some new data. It's been confirmed that Megalodon was indeed warm-blooded. In an article published in 2023, Author Michael Griffiths and his co-workers used tooth analysis to confirm that Otidus megalodon was endothermic. Or in simpler terms, it had the ability to regulate and maintain a certain body temperature separate from the environment. I would recommend the video, Why Only Some Sharks Are Warm-Blooded by Facts in Motion, if you want to go a little more in depth. This was always something myself and other shark enthusiasts speculated for a long time, but we now have a study to back it up. And it makes sense when you think about it. While Megalodon was not the ancestor of the Great White and of the Lamniforms, they were related. One characteristic Lamniforms are known for is their ability to regulate their body temperatures, and that ability had to originate from somewhere. Now, to be clear, I don't think it originated from Megalodon. 
but it made perfect sense for it to have this superpower. It's a factor that contributed to it getting so large. Speaking of large, another updated fact is that Megalodon is now speculated to be longer than previously thought. Originally, it was thought to be anywhere from 50 to 60 feet in length, but a new article has speculated that Megalodon was closer to around 65 feet in length, maybe even more. However, there is one part of this topic that I disagree with, respectfully, of course. Many people are now speculating that Megalodon had a skinnier build than previously thought, like it was more length than bulk. Now, while I don't think Megalodon was a blown up version of a great white, I would argue that it wasn't skinny either. And let me explain using its teeth in my favorite dinosaur, T-Rex. I know, I know, cliche, sue me. Let's start with the teeth of Megalodon compared to the great white and Cretoxyrhina. If we compare the teeth of just great whites and Cretoxyrhina, you'll see that they match up rather well, despite Cretoxyrhina being a little bigger. To the untrained eye, one could mistake Cretoxyrhina's teeth for a great white's or a Mako's. But now, let's compare the teeth of both to a Megalodon. And to drive my point home, let's blow up a great white tooth to the same size as a Megalodon's. This shot here is from the series Prehistoric Predators on the episode dedicated to Megalodon, which I also have linked in the description. Now the thing I want you to take note of isn't the shape of the teeth, but the bulk. Look at how thick the Meg tooth is compared to the Great White. Sure, both teeth have serrations, but the Megalodon's teeth are much bulkier and blunt, more like they were built for crushing. Sound familiar? That's right. I would argue that we could learn a thing or two about Megalodon by looking at T-Rex. When the topic of T-Rex is brought up, it's usually alongside the fact that it had the strongest bite of any terrestrial animal in Earth's history. But what animal is known for having the strongest bite, period? Megalodon at 180,000 newtons. But shark toes, what does this have to do with how Megalodon looked? We're getting there, young grasshopper. Two other aspects that are often brought up about T-Rex is how much of an absolute unit it was compared to other theropods of similar length and how different its teeth were. Most theropods had very sharp blade-like teeth for cutting and ripping flesh, while T-Rex had stake-like teeth for puncturing and crushing bone. Because of this, T-Rex had to be packing a lot of muscle to use those powerful jaws and teeth, especially considering the animals it hunted. This is a post of models made by Buff Zoo Fan Page on Instagram, and it perfectly captures what T-Rex would look like compared to other large theropods. Much, much bulkier. Using this logic, I would argue that Megalodon was a very bulky animal as well, given not only its teeth and bite strength, but what we know it hunted, whales. And based on what I found, it didn't hunt by bite and release like great whites. It was raw violence. Whether it was a meg biting the lower jaw of a whale or smashing into a whale so hard that it broke its back. An animal needs to be packing a lot of weight and muscle to cause this kind of damage to a whale, a prehistoric whale no less. And remember, sharks are the champions of muscle, with 85% of a typical shark's body being comprised of muscle. Now as for how it looked, we still don't know for sure. But if I had to guess, 
here's a drawing I did of how I think Megalodon would have looked. My version is based off the ancestor of both the Great White and the Meg, Krita Lamna. The big thing I want you to take away from this is while it isn't just a bigger Great White, you can see similarities as they are related. Now, for this final piece, Megalodon was a very smart predator. Yes, you knew this was coming at some point if you've been with my channel for a while. Thank you, by the way. I'm always beating the drum of shark intelligence and how they're far smarter than people think. This intelligence had to start from somewhere in shark's prehistoric history. And I would argue that Megalodon was a smart animal because it had to hunt smart animals like whales, dolphins, and other marine mammals. Keep in mind, Megalodon wasn't the only shark in prehistoric history to hunt marine mammals, and I imagine the intelligence to hunt them was passed down through generations to the sharks we have in our oceans today. So there you have it, an updated look at Otidus Megalodon. What do you think about this new data, and did I miss anything by chance? If so, let me know in the comments below. And be sure to check out the articles in the description with all of this data. This is going to be where we end things for today. Thank you for once again giving me some of your time. Remember to get plenty of sleep. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then.